Well, Paul, I guess this photo will finish it. What do we do next? You better go clear the brush off the South 20, I reckon, son. Well, not without I pick up that drag chain they're fixing in the village. Well, you better go into town and get it, then. OK, Paul. I'll stable the team. You know something, Paul? The place looks all right. Looks real pretty. Yeah, this apple looked real pretty, too, son. It was full of worms. I know, Paul. Get away from here, you good-for-nothing muck! You leave my dog alone! Why don't you kill her, Pa? Look at the way she treats my dog. Why don't you kill her? All oh, talk sense. Now, mind you, I ain't saying that's a bad idea. But talk sense. Well, why don't you at least kick her teeth in once in a while? I ain't saying that's a bad idea either. But it ain't feasible. No dominie ever raised his hand to a female woman. I said kick, Pa. Oh, no his foot neither. He had never ought to marry her, Pa. I told you that at the time. It wasn't but a little squirt of nine when you done it. But I knew. I hated her then, and I hate her now. I hate her like tomatoes hate rain. Well, a, a widower gets lonely, son. She used to be a mighty good cook. Well, hired girls cook good, too. And you always got the right to can them when they get sassy. Yeah. What's the time, Pa? About four bells. You and your bells. You ain't aboard ship no more. Well, I wish it was aboard ship. I never should have quit the sea. You know something? It smells good. Sure, son. The soil smells good to a man that's bred to the soil. And I don't see nothing again it. But with the smell of the sea is something that a seaman never gets out of his nostrils. It's a, it's a better, cleaner smell. Yes, sir. The smell of the sea and the sound of the sea are always calling to a man that's known them, loved them, or left them. I know, Pa. Now, what's the time? In hours? Oh, I don't know. It's about 10 o'clock. You better be going down to get that drag chain. Yeah. Maybe I can hitch me a ride into town. Snug. I'm trying to hitch me a ride into town. I figured you might be going in. How about it? Oh, gosh, I'd love to, Snug, but I've got chores to do. Oh, well, in that case, I'll walk. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Ma's going in right away. She'll take you. Oh, swell. Gee, you don't look very tidy to be going into town. Well, gosh, you've been plowing all morning. Why don't you dress neat like your brother? Stretch ain't no brother of mine, and you know it. Okay, stepbrother, then. His mom married your pa, didn't she? I always think a stretch is your brother. You always think a stretch, period. Now, wait for me and don't sulk. Oh, say, Snug, Mom promised to buy me a new swimming suit. What color should I get? Oh, I don't care. You don't? Uh-uh. Well, in that case, I think I'll get me a yellow one. Stretch likes me in yellow. Snug, need a haircut. So what? I can think of a lot better ways to spend four bits than getting myself a haircut. <laughs> oh, Snug, you're so cute when you get mad. <laughs> Morning, Joe. Morning. Can I leave this here? Sure, why not? Hi there, Frank. How about a haircut? Okay. Oh, when you make it snappy, Frank, I'm in kind of a hurry. How's things out at the farm? Oh, all right, I guess. Ain't seen Stretch in quite a spell. Ain't sick, is he? No, no such luck. That ain't no nice way to talk about your big brother. Now, lay off of me, Frank. He ain't no brother of mine, and he ain't so big no more. Uh-huh. Think you could whip him in a fight? Could be, but sure like to try. Well, here I am, Snug. Any time you say. Now, now. Didn't know your big brother was here, did you? Now listen, you. You're getting kind of big for your britches, ain't you? Take it easy. <laughs> oh, go on, let him up. It's OK by oh, me. Lay off, Stretch. You fellas ain't going to muss up this shop. Yeah. Now cut it out. <laughs> you 
You sit still or I'll cut your ears off. Tune in again at the same time tomorrow morning and every morning, son. Monday through Saturday. At the top you of your good? time. Breakfast ready? Come on. And now, after station identification, we bring you five minutes of the latest world event. Not to me, you don't. You hungry, son? Sure, I'm hungry. Hey, Ma, you're slipping. These ain't got no taste, and they're tough. Wait till Milton snug a bet, and I'll fix another batch for you special. Morning. I said good morning. I hear you. You ain't too big yet, young fella. Me to learn you some manners. You tend to your son, Milt. I'll tend to mine. Where is Snug? How should I know? Snug? Snug! Wait, yeah, but he ain't in his room. Well, where is he? Probably swimming in a creek. Swims too much if you ask me. Nobody asked you, and it ain't your creek. the bed, you fool dog. Come on. Come on. Morning, Pa. Hello, son. Morning. Sorry I'm late. Get that dog out of here. I'll leave him be. He won't hurt none. Get that dog out of my house. Your house. Your house. You leave the dog stay. I said I want the dog out of the house. I say the dog stays. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. I heard you. Get down, Ralph. Boy, am I hungry. Hey, where are my hotcakes? You're late. This is a farm, not a hotel. Fix the boy's breakfast. Let him fix it himself. Woman, I'm sick unto death of your heart. I ain't your gonna hunger. waste no more of my life. For once in your life, you're you gonna stop. stop. Now listen to me. Nine years ago, my Marty died. You was all for joining hands in a home. You and your boy stretch here along of me and snug. No sugar-cured ham was ever smoother to the taste until you got me hog-tied in marriage. Nobody held a gun in your ribs. But from that moment of this here, your clamor, hammer, tongue ain't never ceased to swing like an old cow's tail. It ain't so much the fact that you're a woman keeps me from beating you up. It's the thought of how much you and this worthless son of yours would like to land me in jail. Jail is gonna do it. I'm through. I'm getting out. I stuck it out as long as Snug gave us little and needed care. Even such care as you give him. But that day is gone. And I'm going with it. I never should have quit to see you. And I'm shipping back to see you again right this minute. You don't, Daz. You're afraid. The years are sure I made you soft. Like a fly drowned in honey, you'll be stuck here till you die. I'll show you how soft I be. I'll show you how stuck I be. He watched me. You watch me walk out that door right now with naught but my two feet and my two good hands. You just watch me, and I ain't a coming back. That a boy, Paul. I done it. I run him out. I run him out, put in his brat along with him. Hold him all. You're not for the worthless old drunk. You better do something about that there fence. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. You better do something about that hedge. Or I'll have a law on you. You hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. Reckon they could hear you way down the city. Ah, that worthless hedge. It's sucking up the roots of my good wheat. Put your eyes back in roar and quit scrapping. I got business with you. You too, Tony. I just made me out a will. Now I'm going to sign it. And I come over here to get you two fellas as witnesses. You will, Milt? You heard me. You feeling sick, Milt? Heck no. It happens I got a belly full of that woman. Happens I know boats better than farming. Yeah. I hereby leave to my own son, Daniel Dominey, commonly known as Snug, everything of which I die possessed. Signed by Milton Dominey, him being present, 
and in the presence of each other. That's right. Now you sign right there. Yeah, you too, Aurora. Sign on your own side. Okay. Now, Tony, I want you to keep this. And if anything happens to me, I want you to see that Snug here gets his. You can depend on me, all right. Yeah, thank you. Paul, oh, let me come with you. I, I can. Oh, I want you to stay here and look after my interests and your own. Will you do that for me? Okay, Paul, if that's what you want. Good lad. Oh, uh, it is, uh, $20 just to cheer you up. Hey, Milt, you want to wait half an hour? I got to go to town. I'll drive you. No, thanks, Laura. It's better I go this way. <laughs> so long, son. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, all. <laughs> so long, Pa. Good, Good luck, luck Milt. Oh, oh, rough, old boy. Now, now go on back to Snug. Go on. Your father is a fine man, Snug, but stubborn as a mule. Stubborn as a what, Rory? A mule! Them's fighting words to an old mule, Skinny. Stubborn as a mule. What do you know about mules? Not much, but I aim to learn plenty. Gonna buy me a team. You is growed, Snug. If old Sawtooth Judy wears on you, how about working for me? Maybe. Before you commit yourself, Snug, ask him how much. Yeah. How much? Eight dollars a week with dinner. Sunday's off and sleep to home. Starting now. Make it ten dollars. All right, ten dollars. Okay, Mr. McGill, it's a deal. Fine. You can ride along to town with me right now. Gonna size me up a team of mules. You, you gonna buy mules today? I sure am. Take a look at this. Reckon my eyes be as good as any man's. So if those mules be any good, I aim to buy them for $300. Yeah, what you know about mules, you could spit in my eye. A mule ain't no ordinary creature. Why, ah, a success. He's off again. Come on. Are you working for me or him? You? I guess. Yeah, go on with him, son. Any day it gets so you can't stand to hear his bell and you can quit and come on over with me. Trying to steal my help before I get it, huh? Yeah, he ain't no ordinary help. Don't forget that. He's Milt's boy. And you treat him good or else. You fix that fence. Come on. Town hat. Okay. Hey, Ma, where's my coat? Hi, Snug. Do what I told you. Okay, okay. Come on. Red, where's my town coat? Seems like you've done a heap of painting around here. The place sure looks good. Well, if you want to work for me, you'll keep it looking good. What do you chores do around a farm like this? Where's my hat and coat? You got to yell all the time, Pa. Yeah. Morning, Snug. Howdy, Miss McGill. Yeah, Hi, Rad. Hi. What's he doing here so early? He's here because I hired him to work for me. I don't want you wasting his time lollygagging. You hear me? Me? Why, Pa, I throw him back in the creek when I hook him as little as him. <laughs> Rad, you're terrible. Look, Pa, even his ears get red when he blushes. Why ain't you in school? Because it ain't time yet. Oh, you wait here. I'll get the car. You're kind of stuck on Rad, ain't you? No, you Frosny. I am not stuck on her, you Frosny. You quit calling me by that dumb name, you hear me? You quit it! It's your given name, you Frosny. Can I help it that Ma took my name out of the book? I name's Bean and everybody calls me Bean. You quit using that dumb name, you hear me? Hear me? Okay, I'll make a deal with you. You quit kidding me about Rad, and I'll call you Bean. Okay. It's a deal. But I still think you're stuck on her. Hey, 
That ain't no way to drive into a stable, brother. I got no time to waste with small talk. Let me speak to the owner. I am the owner. All the more reason to waste no time. I come to look over them mules. My name's McGill. Oh, have a cigar, Mr. McGill. Oh, Jim, a customer. Step this way. Magnificent animals, Mr. McGill. A wonderful team. In all my experience. Never mind a description. I'll see them. I take it you're a good judge of mules. When I spend my money, I'm a good judge of anything. I can see that at a glance. $300 for them? I wouldn't give you three cents. I like a man with a sense of humor, Mr. McGill. Those are not the animals I advertise. Huh? They're leading them in now. Uh -huh. Holy. Wow. <laughs> That's more like it. Yeah. They don't seem to have no blemish. They had a blemish, Mr. McGill, or I wouldn't sell them to you. Well, how come you advertise them like this? Price with privilege of return, $500. Your eyes are your market, $300. I know it's hard for a man like you to understand this, Mr. McGill, but some folks will pay an extra $200 just for the privilege of changing their mind, like a woman. Uh. <laughs> now, if you'll step into my office, we can settle this whole thing in a few minutes. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't rush me. I'll make up my mind in my own good time. You hear me? Take all the time you want, Mr. McGill. Have another cigar. Hey, what ails these mules? Who will tell you, Bub. You blab to your dad, and then the next thing you know, I have these critters back on my hands. That blowhard ain't no dad of mine. If he was to get stuck, I'd bust my sides laughing. <laughs> Here's the straight dope. These are swell mules, but there's one driver mules. So what drove is still in the army. He could make them jump through hoops. Yeah? Yeah, gentle as lambs. But when it comes to driving them, they just won't be drove. Ain't nobody around that can even bridle them. Hey, what's their names? Well, this is the Jenny. Her name is Moonbeam. Hiya, Moonbeam. This is Crowder. Hello, Crowder. Good name for him, too. Get them all riled up and he'll crowd you. He don't look mean. He ain't. Unless you get him that way. The only thing I want to tell you about those mules, Mr. McGill, I... Never mind a sales talk. I bought them. When can I get them in my place? I'll have the truck to deliver the first thing tomorrow. All right. Snug! Come on. Ruff, stay there. Evening. Thought you shipped out with your pa. Uh-uh. Then where you been all day? Who'll give you leave to loaf? I ain't been loafing. What's for supper besides beer? Them as don't work, don't eat. All right. But don't figure on running me out of here like you did my pa. This is still his place, and I'll be around, so don't get any idea you own it, even if you have taken his chair. Hear me, you snug. Work this farm or get out's my answer to you. I'm working over to McGill. Then sleep over to McGill. I'll sleep here whenever I please or nobody sleeps. And I'll eat here or nobody eats. Hark at him, laying down the law. That's the charge my paw give me, and I'll carry it out until he gets back to do his own accounting. Talks big, don't he, Ma? When I was but nine, Stretch, and you was all of 16, you beat me so hard I was maimed for a month. Yeah. Well, I growed since then. You ain't growed near enough. Maybe not. Leastways, I ain't forgot. Come on, Ralph. Come on, Belinda, give. <laughs> That's fine. Now get them mules unloaded quick. You hear me? Stuck. Stuck. Come here. All right, get that other mule out of here. Come on. Keep that kid out of here, Ma. Boy, them's mules. Can I ride one, Pop? Can I ride one? No, oh, you want to get killed? Get that kid out of here. Who give me them bridles? You hear me? Well, sir, now they're all yours. Go oh. in here, please. 
Here you are. Here, take this. Get back, all of you. Pop, don't holler so loud. You'll scare them. Stand still, you stubborn critter. I'll bite you if it's the last thing I ever do. Don't get sore, Pop. He only wants to play. Still, you hear me? He heard you. <laughs> you stubborn critter. Have right of you. That ain't the way to do it, Pa. Be careful, Pa. <laughs> Don't show him the bridle. That's what's scaring him. You won't get no place trying to bully a mule. Tony says he... How the heck with Tony? I'll handle him. Okay. <laughs> Why ain't you in school? Because it's Saturday, Pops. Why does he always gripe about me not being in school? Pie stripped. There it is. You want to see something beautiful? Pa just bought a team of mules. Come on, look. Oh, boy, this is better than a circus. Now, you hush up. Tell her to pipe down. Now I'll bridle you. Give me that. Oh, Pa, be careful now. Ooh, ooh, pa, ooh, pa, ooh, pa, ooh, pa, ooh, help, ooh, 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 Fritz, oh, help, 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 Frisky, ain't they? Fetch me my gun. Get me my gun. I'll kill him. You're crazy. I'm crazy, am I? I'll get it myself. No, Trying Pops, to crowd me to death. Now, wait a minute. Ah, there ain't no logging. Butchering your own life. Now, wait a minute. I'll buy them off of you. What? Five dollars a week for a whole year. Well, that's only two hundred and sixty dollars. Well, I'll give you twenty dollars down then. That's two hundred and eighty dollars. You'll only lose twenty dollars in the whole deal. So, five dollars each week out of your wages for one whole year. Okay. Here's the 20 my paw give me. Don't sell them, Pop. They're now burning. you keep out of this. Here's anybody got a pencil? Yeah, sure. Well, write down what I dictate. I, Daniel Dominey, known as Snug, hereby promise to pay Robert McGill. Known as Roarer. Shh, quiet. Promise to pay Robert McGill five dollars each week out of my wages due from him for one year. No more, no less from the period of this date. For value received in the shape of two mules. That all? No. If this contract is broke at any time, the mules again become the property of said Robert McGill. Agreed? Sure, sure. I'll sign it any way you like. You sign as witnesses. Me too, me too! Boy, oh boy. All right, now take it easy. Start up again? Sign this. Get those mules out of here before they wreck what's left of my barn. Here. 
Well, you aim to take them critters. None of your business. Listen, you snug. What do you think you're gonna get the feed for them? I ain't relying on you. You bring them home and see what happens. My mules is well raised. I wouldn't take them within miles of you or your maw. Come on, Crowder. We'll go see Tony. He's partial to mules. Snug boy, them is mules. You see, they're all right. Ain't they something, Tony? How come Laura give you leave to come on over and show them? Because they ain't his no more. They's mine. Yawn. You catching the hit. I ain't kidding. I bought them off him. You bought them? That's right. How come Roar'd sell them? Well, after they kicked this barn down, he didn't want them no kicked more. Kicked his barn down? Now look, Tony, I gotta find some place to keep them. Just for tonight, could I tether them on your place? Oh, no, son. They gotta be hobbled. Ain't a rope would hold them. Nary an area fence. We put them in the barn. I'll go open it for you. So you bought them off in Rora, huh? You said it. <laughs> What's you use for money? Well, I give them the 20 my pa gave me, and then I went and hawked on my wages for a year. Son, don't never go into hawk for nothing. No? No. Except maybe for a team of mules like them. All right, bring him in. Come on. Is this floor safe for him? If it ain't, they won't step on it. Come on. Come on, Crown. Over there. Try it anywhere. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Them is mules. Boy, that smells good. Boy, that is good. Good and heavy, too. Hey, fetch that loaf of bread and we'll eat. You betcha. I thought you swore off a of bourbon. That's cooking bourbon. You leave it be. Boy, this is really something. <laughs> Figure around a bit and the chicken stew's got more flavor to it than the strings to a pie ante. You hungry? I'll say. You know, Judy won't even give me a bite of food if I'm two seconds late. Ah, uh, the book of Revelations got words for that woman. The abomination of desolation. You said it. Not like to your true my Marty Sheen. Yeah. Guys, if Ma were here, I bet. Now, son. Just not start that. You're one of the luckiest boys in the face of the earth, and you don't know it. What boy can look at a woman every day of his life and thank heaven she ain't his mother? <laughs> not one in a thousand. I guess I'm pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Now about the mule. How come you got him? Well, did you ever hear of a, a one-driver mule? Hmm. So that's a blemish, huh? Yeah? yeah, I heard of them. I owned them. Well. Are they dumb or what? Boy, don't ever use that wood around a mule. Why not? So you think mules is dumb, huh? Well, no, I... Yeah? Well, it happens these counties that brag on a man with as much brains as a mule. But in all my born days, I ain't ever met him. What man don't eat himself sick from time to time? But does a mule ever found it? No, sir, he's got too much sense. He'll nibble at a full feed bin, blow his nose, and walk off. Did you ever see a mule over drink when he's hot? Hmm. It mules, it's dumb. It's folks. So dumb they think a horse is intelligent. What does a horse do when he puts his foot through a barbed wire fence? Tell me that if you can. I can't. He saws it off. Yes, sir. He draws back in fright and saws the hoof clean off at the joint. But not Mr. Mule. 
Mr. Mule lifts his foot up and, and out. Dainty's a dancer and goes on eating. Why is it a horse never jumps barbed wire? I don't know. Because he can't think. But I seen a mule argue with himself. I seen him think. He says, well, see, here's barbed wire. It's four feet high. I guess I better clear it. He jumps over it and eats a kitten. It's only fools that thinks horses has got brains and dogs man's best friend. Why a mule will lay down his life day by day for the right man until he dies. You talk like you love mules better than dogs even. I'll grant dogs has got brains and hearing and feeling. But you have to feed a dog. But the mule feeds you all his life. And I own a team of them. Want a lick? No. Good clean eyes. No thanks. Okay. Gosh, working for Pop sure has made you crabby. You said it. Kinda hot, ain't it? Go away. Gosh, I only asked if it wasn't kinda hot. Well, it don't get no cooler with you sitting around asking dumb questions. Bet you'd love to be swimming right now, wouldn't you? No. Oh, yes, you would. That's what Rad's doing. So what? I ain't interested. I bet Stretch is interested. She snuck off real early this morning. Took the skip and headed downstream. Took a new swimming suit, too. A yellow one. Are you sure she's with Stretch? Why do you care if you ain't interested? Anybody works all day, if you're a paw, better be tired. Well, don't let paw work you so hard, then. Uh-huh. Oh, poor Snug. Oh, it's cool enough. I feel wonderful. Uh-huh. Are you doing anything tonight? Yeah. Important business. Oh, you and them mules. That's right. And pretty soon, them mules will do anything I want. Well, they can't go to the movies and hold hands with you. Good night, Rad. Well, I like that after I practically invited... I hope Stretch liked the yellow swimming suit. How did you know I was with Stretch? A little bird told me. Uh-oh. Bean! Ah, Mike, he's chasing me again! Get careful of my tools here, Snuggie. Gee, looks like you've been kind of busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what them be? They look like bridles, big ones. Yeah, but them ain't no common bridles. Them's mule bonnets. Mule bonnets? Yeah. Well, what's the difference? Well, you take one, I'll take t'other. I'll show you the difference. Go beam. Go beam now. Yeah. Guess we'd better leave these on for the time being. Now, here's the difference. Don't think they don't know it. Instead of slipping it on over the rears like you do with a common ordinary bride, you unhook it here, see? Oh, Moonbeam, you need to sort of ease it on up and get this in the back of the rears without never touching them, see? Gosh almighty, Tony, you've done it. Yeah. You bridled it. <laughs> see them ears, son? Proud. They stay proud. Women folk wear the pride all over. The legs, the cheeks, their eyes, mostly the hair. 
when the mule crowds it all into his upstanding ears. Now, let's see you get over there and bridle crowd it. Do you think you'll let me do it? You never know until you find out. Go on over there and try it. I'll go with you. Oh, now. Oh, now, Crowder. Don't you take it easy. I know I'm kicking the back out of this one. Huh. Yeah. You know what, Tony? Maybe you'll think I'm crazy. Yeah? But if I had my choice of the mules of the world, I'd choose Moonbeam for one and Crowder for the other. Oh, you got it bad, son. Mule fever. You'd be lucky at that. Why? Mm. Every boy has his dog. I've heard tell of a prisoner being in love with a mouse, but the life of such pets on this earth ain't long. The mules ain't pets. That's right. Mules is different. You know, if I was to name the one quality above all others of a mule, I'd call it sadness. Why sadness? Well, a man has his hopes and his children. And you know, there's even dogs can trace their line back a hundred years. But a mule's got no hope before or after. Why, his life is just a single link without no chain. <laughs> Mule ain't got no yesterday and no tomorrow. And the only thing he can hope for is that he'll find a man he can love. Some does, but most don't. And the many that don't, well, they're the saddest of all. Tony, them mules let me bridle and unbridle them. Could be. I drove a parcel of mules in a day. Ain't drove them for the past 20 years. But you know these nights when I can still sense the smell of the sweat and hear that fur-off cry of... Scudderhoe! Scudderhoe! What's that? Well, it means G and hard to you, boy. But you won't find it in area book, nor in the memory of many living men. But my team, they'd lean to the ground for me all day and every day <laughs> till they draw their shells to death. Well, you ain't the only one who's got mule fever. I still got it. And I ain't never seen a better team than you bought there. And let me tell you, son, a man with a team of mules, well, sir, he's in business. You'll help me, Tony? Sure. Sure, I'll help you. You just give me a few days of tinkering and I'll see what it can do. Scara who? Scara hey! All right, ain't they, Mike? Yeah, you're right, Tony. I'm glad I came over. I ain't never seen a better team. Hiya, Tony. Hi, Snug. Sorry I'm late, but Roar kept me plowing till after sundown. Hey, Snug, I want you to meet Mike Malone. This is Milt Dominey's boy, Mike. Well, howdy, Snug. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Malone's foreman of a big logging track north here. He's kind of short of work from you, so he thought he'd come over and take a look at you. And... Well, how do they stack up, Mr. Malone? Strong a team as I ever seen. All the work you want, any time you want it. <laughs> Gee, that's swell. Of course, we well, aren't how even How much sure. you paying, Mike? Fifteen dollars a day. Any piece work? Yeah, sure, but it all evens up. We'll take the piece work. Suits me. <laughs> Tony, we... Yes, sir, we'll take the piece work. Okay, well, so long, Tony. So long, Snug. Right. Report to the track whenever you're ready. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mike. But, Tony, we aren't even Listen. sure they can drive you. Listen, son, you got a lot to learn. Never let on what you don't know until you do know. Now that he's gone, we can find out for ourselves. I fixed the wagon the harness best they could, so let's see what they'll do, huh? Now? Yeah, after a week of tinkering, we're ready to try him right now. Well, 
Yeah, son, go to it. Me? Think I'm crazy? I might ruin them for good. You're the one to do it, Tony. Yeah, but these your mules. Yeah, but you drove mules long before I was even born. Go ahead, I'll stand back here and watch. Moonbeam! You try driving him. Well, heck, Tony, I wouldn't even try. If they won't drive for you, they won't drive for no one. Sit down, son. Did you ever think on pride, Snug? No, not particular. Well, pride has broke more men, split up more homes, and caused more murders than any other creature of the mind. A couple of minutes ago, you seen what it done to me. I wished for a gun so as I could kill them mules, just like Rora done. I wouldn't have blamed you either, Tony. Oh, you don't mean that, Snug. I wouldn't want you to. Now, them mules ain't never kicked nor crowded me. In all fairness, I got to say, I never knowed a more polite a team. But they sure broke the back of my pride and busted my heart wide open. Back to reason now. You go drive your mules. Tony, maybe it ain't like you think. Maybe the mules just can't be bothered with pulling a light wagon. You know that, that, that fallen log at the top of your pasture? Yeah. Well, I got a notion to hitch into that. And maybe then with a heavy load, well, it'll work. See, that might be a good idea. Mules is good pride, too. Let's go rouse this out of drag chain. All right, son, I guess you're about ready to try him. Yeah. Quit sizing up that log. You ain't gonna pull it. Guys, nice, Tony, it's bigger than I figured. Yeah, their legs is a whole lot stronger than you know. Come on. Yeah. Gee, Tony, supposing they won't eat you. Shut up. Don't be putting the wrong ideas in their heads. The mule even knows what you're thinking. Go on. Okay, Tony. What do you want, your old log? <laughs> now you're talking. Any place down there to buy the barn. Okay, here we go. Come on, Moonbeam. Crowder, hop! <laughs> Easy, Moonbeam. Come on, Crowder. Come on, Moonbeam. Come on, Crowder. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, Crowder, good moonbeam. Remember what you said, Tony, about a man owning a team of mules, his being in business? Yes, sir, and that's us. You said it. Uh-oh. Here comes Superman. Hi, Stretch. Hi, Red. What are you doing over here? Oh, nothing. Just happened by. We're busy. Beam. Busy. 
a good movie in town tonight. You want to go with me? Oh, sorry, I can't, Stretch. Stand eggs don't grow on trees. I suppose you're already going with Snug, huh? Snug? Well, I hardly ever see him. The minute he's through here, he's off with them mules of his. Yeah, but he's sorry you ever got stuck with them. He is not. He drives them. Are you kidding? Your pa couldn't even bridle them. I know, but Snug can do anything with them. Why, him and Tony's got them so they'll haul logs and everything. Well, what's he aiming to do with them? Sell them? Of course not. He's going to work out his year with Pa, like in the contract. And then he's going to go over to the logging camp and get himself a job. Make 15 bucks a day, he says. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You sure you don't want to go to that movie? Mm-mm. Well, I'll be seeing you. So long, Rad. So long. Gosh, Rad, you talk too much. Does he have to know everything? What do you want? I want to talk to you, Aurora. What's on your mind? Plenty. All right, come on in. No, it's business. You come on outside. Well, what do you want? Well, not so much for me. Plenty for you. You got the grit to reach out and take it. Listen, you remember them mules snug gun you out of a couple of weeks ago? Done me nothing. It was me done him. Get my money back, won't I? I'm a good helper to boot. Oh, oh, boss, you got rooked. Listen, Snug knows what he was doing. Them mules will drive. Drive? What can't be bridled can't be druv. You saw it yourself. Does it take a drill to reach your brain, Roarer? I just saw Snug driving them right now. They was hauling their own weight as easy as kiss my foot. Yes, sir, Snug sure stuck you good and plenty. You want to stick him back, or don't you? If you do, my price is share and share alike. What are you driving at? Well, look, Roar. I know down for logging camp, they're willing to pay 15 bucks a day for good work mules. With me driving them, that's 90 bucks a week. You and me can split. The mules ain't mine no more. You remember that contract you wrote, don't you? Yeah, sure. So I guess pay me $5 each week out of his wages. Yeah, but you added if the contract was broke at any time, them mules was you and again. It would snug be as slick as you say. How could I persuade him to forfeit? Easy. Fire him. Well, how would that help? Snug's a good worker. He could easy get placed. At more than I pay him, too. Besides, he's still got the mules, ain't he? Now, uh, leave that to me. I ain't so dumb, neither. Don't you get it? He forfeits one week's pay to you, and the contract's broke. How can he pay? Happen he's in no shape to work for you or anybody else. I don't want any trouble. You hear me? Won't be no trouble. I could work their mules all day and never sweat. It's easy money, too, Aurora. Week in, week out, sure as a milk check. All you gotta do is fire him, leave the rest to me. You wanna shake on it and let me handle everything? Now look here, Stretch. I'll be party to nothing where anybody gets hurt. Oh, look, Aurora, no matter what you do, him and me has to have this thing out anyway. Remember Just leave now. it to me. I don't want no trouble with the law. Bad girl. What do you mean coming in so late? Look, you Rad. You better get undressed and go to bed. Don't get to say your prayers. Rad. Yeah? Do you suppose Pop says his prayers every night? Well, I don't know. Why? Well, if he don't, he sure ought to. And just in case he don't, I think I'm going to pray for him. Good sermon, Reverend. Thank you, Judge. Thank you very kindly. Good morning, Reverend. Good morning, Rad. How are you? Bean, were you in Sunday school this morning? Sure. Mom always makes me. Good for Mom. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Reverend. McGill. If you're looking for Stretch, don't waste your time. He don't never come to church. Bad if he needs it. Oh, hush up and go wait in the car. Hi, Rad. Oh, hi, Betty. Come on, dear. Oh, oh, my God. oh, hello, Miss 
Miguel. Hello, Hi, Miguel. 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 Hi, Miguel.
Well, you wanted him. Now you can have him. You, you want I should go get my pot? No. You stay in here. Help me up. Now listen. You peep by what you've seen here today, I'll get you. Come on, help me into my boat. Yes, sir, I fixed him good, Tony. Hold still now. Ouch! Is that horse liniment? Yes, that's horse liniment. I ain't never heard no horse complain either. Now hold still, will you, Snug? Boy, I hit him with all my might. I know you whooped him, but hold still. There's one eye you won't use for a long time. Yeah, and there's an ear you ain't going to use unless you let me fix it. Now hold still. After what I did to his face, it'll call for a month of mending. Yeah, that's good. That'll hold you. You through? Yeah. Now, Tony, let's figure a bit. Stretch won't tell, and neither will his maw. Not on your life. And Rad won't tell. You bet she won't. Not after what happened to that pretty boy date of hers. Mm hmm? So what? So with nobody telling, I can easily get Rora to fire me, can't I? All right, Rora fires you. Then what? Gee, Tony, you ought to borrow the brain of a mule. After he fires me, I take my team over to the Logan camp and we go to work. Fifteen bucks a day, partner. <laughs> There's five dollars a week for Rora. Yeah. There's feed for the team. Sure. There's new oak stalls with feed bins for the bellies. We'll get them. There's new shiny harness for the back. We can and do shoes that. Shoes all around, eight of them. We can still swing it, Tony. Yeah, with a little figure, and I guess we could. What are you doing? Smelling for rain? Nope. I figured Bean might be snooping around here. Wouldn't put it past her to be up on the roof or underneath the floor. Snug. Come here. What do you want around here? I had to come, Snug. Are you all right? I'm fine. Let me see. Why don't you go see how Stretch is? Maybe he'd like you to hold his hand. You've got a right to be sore. And how? I hadn't ought to have gone to see him this afternoon. You said it. Oh, I hope I never see him again. Well, it ain't no skin off my nose if you do or if you don't. Oh, don't say that, Snug, please. Unless you mean it. Did you mean it when you said you never wanted to see him again? Cross my heart and hope to die. Remember when, when we was kids, we came here once and you carved our initials in this tree. Don't show no more. I can still see it. At least I can remember it. Don't you? I guess. Oh, Snug, your poor lip. It ain't nothing. It don't hurt. You mean if a girl was to try to kiss you, it wouldn't be painful? You want to try? find out sooner or later. Did it hurt? I wouldn't be known by a little peck like that. Did it hurt that time? Yeah. That was swell. Oh, Snaga, I've been such a little fool. Such a little heat. You said it. Bean. Shh. Where'd you 
come from? How'd you get over here? I followed Rat. I snuck in here while he wasn't looking. What for? I'm snooping, Tony. I wanted to be sure she had sense enough to make up with Snug. Well, don't you know what happens to little girls what snoops? Sure. What? They get hacked to things. <laughs> You seen Snug any place? Uh-uh. Ran off and left my tractor running, darn him. Snug? Shh. You're scaring my kitty. Where is that worthless boy? I don't know. Where's Rad? She ain't up at the house. Well, where is she? Search me. Maybe she's in swimming. Oh. I didn't tell where Snug was, did I? Hey, you, Snug! Uh-oh. Get out of there! What do you think you're doing? You know what time it is? You ain't hired to go swimming. Take it easy, Pa. Well, you keep out of this. Well, get out of there! You hear me? Who couldn't? Idiot. You know you left that tractor running up there? Well, what do you know about that? Oh, so you think it's funny, do you? Well, who's going to pay for the gas? Oh, shut up. Snug. What did you say? You heard me. I said, shut up. Who's going to buy me a new pair of ears the way you're always yelling? You're fired. Get off my place. You're fired. OK, it suits me fine. Oh, Snug, you had not have been so fast. It worked, though. I wanted him to fire me. But why? Ah, you're just a girl. You wouldn't understand now. Rover. Someday, maybe I'll tell you. But, Snug, I want to know now. Tell me. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing now. And I know what I'm going to do. What? Put my mules to work for both of us. Snug Dominie, if you don't tell me Look, exactly. Do you want to be Mrs. Snug Dominie someday? Mm hmm. OK, then. Shut up. Again, a fine team like that's got a right to decent honors. They ain't got a chance. Yeah. Well, don't you worry, Mike. When we get paid tonight, they'll get their chance. Okay. Guys, Tony, he's right. We're spending more time mending than we are hauling. Listen, son. If a team can't trust a harness, they wouldn't pull a toothpick. Now quit bothering me, will you? Beam. Come on. Whoa. Hiya, Mac. You looking for Tony? Yeah. Have you seen him? Seen him over at the pay window. He said to give you a message. Yeah. Said to drive the team on home and not to wait. He had stuff to buy. He'd get along home later. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mac. Come on, Beam. Hey, Brad. What's up? Me. Well, what's wrong? Shh. Pop's talking to Sheriff Burson. He's plotting against Snug some more. 
It's in the contract, Todd. Five dollars a week every week. And if the contract's broke, them mules is mine again. But the contract ain't broke yet, Rorer. It's Saturday and he still ain't paid me my five dollars. You hear me? Heck, you fired him, Rorer. Darn right I fired him. Got fresh with me. We're snug at anyhow. Why don't he come? Well, he's down to the logging camp. We gotta work late there. He better make it by midnight or Pop sure as heck will take them mules. Help! Look out! Why ain't you in school? Gosh, he never even asked if I got hurt. Thanks for the buggy ride, fellas. Timber! Guys, Tony, you're drunk. So am I. Come on. Tony, you forgot your bundle. Come on, Tony, I've been waiting here for hours. I gotta talk to you. Whoa. Come on, Tony. Now, don't get mad at me, Snug. Wait to see what I got on this bundle. All right, Tony. Thanks for the ride, oh, Albert. Oh. So long, Tony. So long, Tony. So long, fellas. Never mind about them, Tony. You're going to bed. I gotta get over to my kitchen. Come on, now, now sit down, Tony. Come on, there. Get away, Rob. Come on, let me help you off with your jacket, there, Tony. Come I don't on. get this way off and slug. I know, Tony. I'm sorry. I... Sure, you, you found some cooking, brother. How did you know? You wait to see what I bought them mules. I... That, that, that's swell, Tony. And what I brung you? Listen, Tony. Tony, I, I gotta get over to Roar's tonight. I gotta give him the money. L let me have five dollars, huh? Five dollars? Just, just five dollars. Oh, five dollars. If you're here someplace, better be here someplace. You see them red tassels? When Moonbeam and Crowd have Where's our money? The proudest, have you spent all our money, the Tony? Proudest... Tony, have you spent it all? Don't go to sleep on me. Wake up. I gotta have five dollars or I'll lose my mules. Tony, listen to me. What am I gonna do? It's too late to borrow the money. Tony. Mighty fine supper, Lucy. Well, I'm glad you liked it, Todd. I baked the pie, Mr. Bruce. Well, in that case, young lady, I'm doubly glad your father had business with me. Business? What business? Private business. It ain't no concern of nobody's but mine. What's that? I didn't hear nothing. You did so. That's Jess Forrester's whistle. All her bowls got different whistles. I can tell them a mile off. Chess whistle's real pretty. Wish I could do like him. Ouch! She kicked me. That girl gets her temper from you, Pop. Hey. Hi, Rad. Hi, Chess. What you doing here? I got something to tell you. Well, what is it, Chess? It's about Snug. What about him? I don't know what to do. What do you mean? Is something wrong? No, he's all right. It's like this, Rad. I ain't supposed to know what messages come through the office, and I ain't supposed to talk about them. But one come through today. For Snug? No, for his stepmother. They notified her first, because she's the widow. Oh, no. Yeah. Milt Dominic, buried at sea. Oh, poor 
poor Snug. So I come to you, Rad. Snug don't live to home no more, and if he did, that old woman wouldn't tell him. Somebody should tell him. Yeah. I'd tell him myself that you're his gallant. I figured you could tell him better than me. Okay. I will. Thanks for coming over, Chess. Careful, Bean. It was already chipped. Ma, I gotta talk to you about Snug. Shh. Snug just got here while you was talking to Chess. He's in there now with Pop. You're wasting your time. I won't do it. Listen to me. Look, Crow, you gotta listen. I'm telling you, I ain't fixed a pay till Monday night. I hear you. All I'm asking is you should take my note. Ten dollars to stand for five, only till Monday night. Ten for five. Not if it was twenty. Not if you was to give me fifty for five. Contract says you gotta pay me tonight or forfeit them mules. But look, Sheriff, I can't... You've got until midnight, Snug. Else Rory can take him. That's the law. Won't say he's mine again. But they'll never drive for you. They'll drive or I'll kill them. Sell or wait for glue. Please, War, listen, I can't... Is that the right time, Sheriff? Yeah. Roar. Oh. Give the kid a break, Roar. You keep out of this, Todd. Oh, Ma, we just gotta help him. Could you give me the money? Oh, I'd like to help you both, Red, but I don't see how I can. Your pa'd never forgive me. Oh, there must be something we could do. Ma, what do you suppose makes Pop so mean? I don't know, dear. In the Bible, it says that when people do bad things, they roast an eternal fire. Will Pop roast? Ain't there nothing you can do, Tony? Oh, I made a mess of things already. It was me that brought all this trouble oh, on you. Forget it. If a jet hadn't gone, then drop oh, it. Skipper, Tony, this ain't no time for a crying jag. Leastways, you ain't again me. They are. But ain't there no way we can stop him? You gotta face the facts, son. This time, he's got the law on his side. Tony, suppose we hitch him to the wagon and drive him across the county line. Can he take him then? We ain't got time for that. Besides, it only gets you into more trouble. <laughs> Here they come. Look, Roar, you got me into this. Now let me handle it. Mm. Tony, you better open up. All right, all right, I'm coming. I'm glad I never voted for you. I wouldn't be able to sleep nights. Tony, I don't like it no more than you do. Oh, it's midnight. I want them mules. Now, wait a minute, Roar. Give me until Monday. Out of my way. Leave him take him, son. Roar! Oh, they're his and now, Snug. He can do what he pleases. It's all right, Snug. Here, get away from there. Leave him alone. Here! What ails you? Oh, I think you're horrible. Here. Here's the $5. I'm paying it for a snug. Happen it's after midnight, but maybe you'll still take it. Go on, look at it good, why don't you? It might be counterfeit. I wouldn't want that my pa should be cheated out on nothing. Now, Red, I... Before I was old enough to go to church, you and Ma taught me the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet, you always told me. Fine one you were to talk. In a moment since you sold them mules to snug, but what you've covered them and, and tried to get them back. Now you listen to That's me. That's right. I Lord ain't... bless her shout, scream. You've done it all your life, scaring them with out of mom and Bean and me. Well, it don't scare me no more. You could holler till the cows come home and it still wouldn't make the wrong you done right. <laughs> and there's another commandment you taught me. Honor thy father and thy mother. Well, I can honor Mom. She's good. She didn't mean to cross you up. Honest, she didn't. It was just that she knew that this was wrong. So she gave me the money out of her savings. Oh, I wish I could honor you like I do her. I can't now. Oh, Pa, how could you? How could you? waiting for you. What do you want? Evening, Roar. Holy Moses. What happened to you? Oh, I, uh, 
Got in a smash up with my car. Uh huh. Appears more like somebody beat the daylights out of you. Well, what do you want? This ain't no time to be hanging around my place. I uh, want to talk to you about them mules. To heck with them mules! I don't want to hear about them mules again, ever. Oh, wait a minute. We've got a bargain about them. Well, it's off, get me? It's off. How come? Don't you want them no more? I do not. I wash my hands of them. If them mules was gold-plated and give to me on a gold platter, I wouldn't want oh, them. Wait a minute. You're crazy. How can you stretch? I never should have listened to you in the first place. I want no part of you or them mules or any part Okay, Roller. Of... You can back out on me if you want to. Me, I ain't through yet. And you better not try to cross me, neither. If I can't have them mules snug, ain't gonna happen, neither. You... And you keep your big mouth shut. Because if you start talking, I'm liable to talk, too. in bed. There ain't no water in bed, Pop. Hmm. You run along to bed right now. Wanna come and tuck me in? All right. Wait a minute. As long as you're up, let's see how much you've grown, huh? How much, Pop? Yeah, it must be more than an inch. Oh, swell. <laughs> Get them mules, Pop? Mules? Don't you dast even mention mules to me again, you hear me? Mules. Them mules is a plague on this house. I'm glad it was you who told me about my poor Rad. He was... He always... I'm so sorry, Snug. Well, he loved to see you, Rad. That's the way he would have wanted it. I just wish he could have seen my mules once before it happened. Yes, sir, I wish he could have seen me drive my team. I wished he could have, too. Mules sure would have got a kick out of that. What's that, Tony? Mills will. He gave it to me to keep the day he left. Yeah, I forgot. I ain't forgot. You own more than a team of mules now, Snug. You own your pa's farm. What about Stretch and Judy? You leave that to me. I'll take this over to Judge Stillwell in the morning. He'll fix it. He'll fix them, too. You know, Snug, that piece of paper is just like your pa's fish come back to knock the both of them out of Dominie Farm, so that Dominie can live there in peace. You know, it would uh, sort of make a nice home for the both of you. That is, if that's the way you feel about it.
got enough to drink? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. I'll stay with the team. You bring the harness. Yeah, later. I'm busy. Figure enough how much we made? Don't interrupt. Now I gotta start adding up all over again. Come on. Come on, Dean. Come on. You go to it, Power. Come on. You ate a good meal after all that work. There. Hey, just a minute now, Bean. Here, here's some quick fire. Well, it's a good thing for you critters tonight, Saturday, and I got a gal. You still be hauling logs. What's the matter, Bean? Don't you think I got a gal? You got it reckoned? How much did I make? Well, as near as I can figure, Snuggy made himself 114 bucks this week. You're crazy. That's the total. You still got your share coming. Besides, you got to pay for all that harness you Yeah, had. but you can hold mine for a spell. I might get on another one of them spending sprees. <laughs> but, Tony, you got to have some money. I'm eating regular. It's OK with me. You ain't got the sense of a mule, but you got the heart of one. You going over to McGill's tonight? Mm. I ain't washing my neck for you. Brad, Snug's here. Hi, Snug. Be right down. All right. I've been primping for an hour. And I've been trying to slick up, too. Bean! Bedtime! Oh, that child. Miss McGill, here's the five bucks I owe Aurora. I could pay him more if he'd let me. I'd sure like to own them mules outright. I know. I spoke to him about it last week, like he asked me. He wouldn't even listen. Them mules is a sore spot with him. He lies awake nights, figuring how he can even the score with you. Not a chance. I know. He'll get over it. Just happens he's still good and mad. It'd be even matter if he knew about me and Rad. He'd yell his head off, but I'm glad. Well, here I am. Hello. Gosh, you look cute. I'll go on. I'll bet he tells that to all the girls. Oh, no, not snug. Rad, you know there's never been no one but you. Of course, I was only kidding. I've known all along. Bean! Where can that child be? Have you seen her? Not since supper time, huh? Oh. I think I'll go to bed. I need my rest. Here, I noticed that. Here, here's the five dollars from Snug. I think I'll put the kitty to bed. Bean! Snug, I think you better get me home before it starts to rain. Well, we're closer to Tony's. We'll stop there till it blows over.
one with a snare. Didn't quite work out the way he figured, that's all. Are you hurt bad? I don't know. Well, you get and get quick before you... Don't it! Don't it! Now get this, Stretch. Snug ain't signed his complaint yet, but if you ever show your face around here again, he will sign it. And you'll be a guest of the county for a long time afterwards. They're taking an awful lot of stuff, Snug. I'll leave them take everything that weren't nailed down, Sheriff. Don't like evictions as a rule, but this one done my heart good. I give them an hour to cross the county line. Believe me, they'll cross it. Yes, boys, that's the last you'll see of them. Where are we going now, Snug? Right over to your place to tell your pa about us. Oh, he won't like it. Well, then he can lump it. Like your paw's stuck. And how he's stuck. Clean up to the action. Let's go try and help him out. Come on, guys. Jail for trespass. Do you hear me? What you doing, digging for oil, Rory? <laughs> kind of stuck, ain't you? Stuck's what you'll be if you don't get. You too. Seems to me you ought to have more sense than to try to drive a tractor across a plowed field after such a heavy rain. Gee, the way you're fixed, Rory, should this ground harden, it'll take dynamite to get you out. You're gonna lose a pile of money, Rory, with no tractor. May even lose half a year's work. Get your neck over here where I can reach it. I'll show you who loses what. Want me to uh, pull you out? You! You pull me out. You and what? Me and my mules. <laughs> we could try. Think we can do it? I don't know. It weighs better than a couple of tons. Could be. I'll bet they can do it. So you think them mules can do what a 40 horsepower tractor can't do, huh? Maybe. Well, if you was a growed man snug and had the guts to make a real bet, I'm the one who'd bet you plenty they can't do it. Like what, for instance? Snug, you still owe me for them mules and near a year's work to boot. Here's the bet I'll make you. If them mules can pull my tractor out of the mud, you don't owe me nothing no more. No work, no money, and they's all yours. These two sides to every bet, Snug. Yeah. If they don't pull you out, what then? Then them mules is mine to do with as I see fit. Go on, Snug. Take him up on it. They can do it. Take him up on it. Okay, if I take the bet and win, will you give me your leave to marry Rad? What gal with any sense would marry the likes of you? I would, Pa. And that's using good sense, Rad. Is it a bet? Yeah, it's a bet. I'll get my team. Come on, Rad. Gee, I'd make you a little side bet of a bottle of bourbon. If I had a bottle. <laughs> Come on, team. Come on, Moonbeam. Oh, oh, now. Ah. Straight ahead lies solid ground. Okay, Tony. Stand aside, Roar. Well, you need my help, won't you? Oh, heck, I will. Stand aside and stay put. And see that you play fair, because there are folks over there to bear me witness that'll run you out of church for the rest of your life. Uh. If you two don't get this out, I'm switching back to horses. You heard me. 
Well, it's up to you, Snug. I just give them a pep talk. Here we go. Come on! They're still in the family, ain't they? Movie Channel presents Saturday Night Triple Play. Movies from 20th Century Fox three times in a row. Wonderful. Every Saturday night. You're putting me on. Trust me. Uncut. What could possibly go wrong? You're dangerous. Commercial free. You know, you gotta be wacko. Yeah! Three times in a row. Of course. We demand. It is a license to live. Saturday Night Triple Play. Every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Only on Fox Movie Channel. This scene really lights a fuse for the movie. When you talk about a 10-story generator, you're pushing the threshold of what you can actually build. You had to see it through Dune's eyes. How are we going to accomplish this? If the scene had not worked, it would have been catastrophic for the movie. With a one-all sequence like this, you've got to just get it right. Ember is a very unique, and I think one of a kind, family movie and an action movie at the same time. We've got two kids who are concerned about the world they live in and want to try to find a way to either save it or get out of it and save everybody with them. The kids have grown up all their lives in an underground city. They don't know another world. It's a city that's run by a huge generator, and uh, the generator is probably getting near its last few days. City of Ember already boasts a very talented cast. Harry Treadway as Doom and Saoirse Ronan are literally the heroine and the hero that propel the entire story. Dune's first discovery of the, of the generator is certainly one of the most important scenes in the film because it sort of sends a lightning bolt straight down the center of Dune and it's a kind of a clear signal that there is no fixing this place. The generator is the heart of the city and if you don't establish this, then you don't really have a movie. The scale of that is important. The urgency of that is important. The fact that it's breaking down to really show that is important. That's the red flashing light saying, warning, 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 because you have to actually show the threat. You have to show the desire to get out of the city. The goal here was to show just how far this thing has gone into disrepair. Without this shot working, we would lose a pivotal, dramatic component in the plot of this film. Without nailing the sequence, we'd be left without that, that turning point. It had to be right because it shows the scale of the generator. It shows the scale of the city. And if it was small, then it would have no impact. This scene just had to work. If it didn't, we wouldn't have a second or third act. 
and action. At the end of the day, this is a scene about point of view, because really there's no dialogue in this scene. It's a purely visual sequence. And so the first challenge for me was how to get the audience into Dune's head. Traditionally, that's done with a sequence of cuts. We would show Dune coming in, cut to a reaction of him realizing that the door to the generator is open for once, then cover him walking in, and as he comes in, come in close to his eyes and then cut away to his point of view. That shows the place. But I knew that this was an opportunity to create a visceral punch. I, I really wanted to be able to cross the threshold into this generator room and for the audience to believe that this is a grounded space. This is one of those moments where you really want the audience to be completely planted in our character's footsteps. And so I knew the only way I could really pull a sequence like this off was to try to play it all in one. And that means bringing Dune in, and then as he walks in, the camera glides in over his shoulder, and in essence, we become his eyes, we become his point of view. With a movie like Ember, where, where the image tells the story just as much as any word does, you had to see it through Dune's eyes. The fact that it was one continuous take is an enormous challenge because, first of all, it's so long. It's a long scene, and it has many, many, many elements. Everything had to line up just so. If you missed even one degree of camera bank, pan, or tilt, we just have to start all over again. Since it is seamless, you have no outs. You have no way to cut from that scene to something else. So as you go into it, if you're halfway through and then something doesn't work or something just doesn't look right, then you have to start over again. With a one-all sequence like this, you, you've got to just get it right. You, there's, no, there's no cutting around a problem. To create this scene, we had to shoot it in four different stages. The first stage was Dune, our hero. We shot him on a set with the rest of the actors who play the pipe workers. That takes us to a uh, green screen that Dune stands in front of as the camera pushes over him. One of the things that really saved me on this film was having a real ace camera crew. The hands of the camera operator moving us up and down this generator create a humanity. They help really sell the moment and ground it. We use the steady cam to go through the door. Uh, the door is a, a tiny little door at that point, so we need to s fit through it. And we had a huge steady cam operator, a Scottish man, you know, big, tall, massive guy. So how is he going to fit through the door? So that was part of the problem in the beginning, but you know, it all worked out. Uh, it was it was a matter of rehearsing the scene several times until we until he knew how to accommodate his body to go through the tiny little door, you know. The most difficult thing about the scene was the camera the camera move was the most important because that's what gives you the whole one take feel. It's really one of those scenes where you need to have everybody in sync and everybody has to know what they're doing. This takes us to the second element in this scene, which was the bridge, the base of the generator, and the workers who were running around on this bridge. A scene like this is sort of clockwork. You, you, you've you've got to nail the timing. It was really critical that everyone was in sync, everyone was on their mark, that the cameras were firing on all cylinders, the 75 extras were where they needed to be. The extras have to be perfectly choreographed so that they're not gonna like block the piece that you're looking for exactly when that person crosses frame or something. There was always some problem. There was always somebody doing something that didn't have to do. So that became a bit of a problem. We must have had at least um, 14 or 15 takes. We spent about three quarters of a day on this thing, which might not sound like a lot, but when you've got this many people working on something, you know, we can get we can get a lot more done in that in that time than just one shot. Main camera. The third element was the generator itself. Now here, obviously, because of the, the constraints of, uh, of the area that we were working in, we couldn't build the whole generator. The generator was, was very, very big and very huge, so we just built the specific pieces to work with. That meant building a massive structure, really, that was on its own almost three stories tall there on the set. This is the base of the generator. The upper part of the generator was created visually, so that didn't exist. This thing was created completely in the computer and integrated into the first and second elements so that we've got a kind of seamless transition from one to the other. 
then the fourth element placed on top were the workers on scaffolds who were actually affixed to the side of the generator. So therefore it means you have all of your extras standing on a platform 40 foot up in the air. We obviously had the generator going on water coming all over the place that could have ended up with someone falling. You, know, you have to explain, be very careful. It was a bit worrying that we were going to lose some, but we didn't, thankfully. Stations, everybody! From there, we go into the computer. We took live action elements. In this case, we had fire, we had water from the hoses, we had all the, the workers in the scaffolding, and actually projected them on planes. And then when you do that, the computer sort of takes over and locks everything in place, and that's what makes it look seamless. One of the real problems with pure CG shots is that the camera generally has no gravity to it. There's no sense of an operator. And so it was really tricky and really important that the handoff from the live action plate camera to the CG was done with a real effort to maintain the kind of humanity of the operation. A mechanical move, it's a black mark on a sequence like this. It kind of, it spells death. The beauty of digital effects is that you're creating and layering many, many elements. And it's the kind of thing that, that takes many, many hours, hundreds, thousands of hours to, to put together in layers and layers and layers. Everyone believed in the shot, everyone knew it was important for the story, and when you watch the finished shot on screen, it's all worthwhile. <laughs> Very pleased the way the scene came out. It's an awesome shot, and it's one that has uh, a lot of emotional impact. And to me, that's essential in a shot. Yesterday, watching it, I, I realized just how how worth all this sweat was. We got the impact we were looking for. It's going to make a difference in this film. It really feels like you are right there. It feels like it's one uh, same space all together, and it isn't. It's pretty amazing. We set out to do something that shouldn't have worked, and at the end of the day, you know, we put it up on screen. I'm, I'm really proud of that. to win. Mm. Then go to foxmoviechannel.com and enter the young Frankenstein sweepstakes. Oh, nice. Oh, you could be the lucky winner of young Frankenstein on Blu-ray disc. Hey, let's check it. Wow! Grand Prize winner gets a Blu-ray player and 10 20th century Fox Blu-ray titles including young Frankenstein. You're putting me on. Go to foxmoviechannel.com and enter for your chance to win now. Man is capable of extreme engineering, but eventually, everything breaks down. I'm Sean Riley, and I'm joining the most elite repair teams on the planet for 
fixes that are expensive and dangerous on a monumental scale. If it's big and it's broken, we're gonna fix it. And you're coming with me. World's Toughest Fixes, Wednesdays on Nat Geo. I need your help getting rid of somebody. You ain't serious. You don't know how serious I am. Tonight. I see the one you did two or three times. Any reason he'd come after you? It's kind of creepy with all that's going on with Shane lately. First thing that crossed my mind. From this point on, there's no turning back. Let me see your head! Shot and try to kill one of my detectives. Is he, uh, is he talking yet? The Shield, all new, tonight at 10 on FX. The biggest night on television is on Fox. With medicine's most brilliant mind. You can't be judgmental. And yet. You'll have to excuse Dr. House. He mistakes immaturity for edginess. And the FBI's most unlikely heroes. Dr. Bishop, any thoughts? Yes. Where can I get one of those white suits? All new house. All new fringe. I like to watch. Oh, yeah. It all starts this week. So new. So Fox. center stage in a Saturday triple header. First, Sam Bradford and the Sooners square off against Kansas State. Then, Chase Daniel and high-powered Missouri take on Colorado. Plus, Pete Carroll's Trojans march into Tucson to battle Arizona. It's a college football Saturday triple header this week on FSN. Three students. One conversation where film theory collides with the reality of filmmaking. Life after film school. Today's guests, Alex Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi, co-creators, writers, and executive producers of the Fox series, Fringe. Most of what I'm about to show you has not been made public. Olivia Dunham, FBI. Navy scrambles two F-18s. They reported stains in the windows and no signs of life aboard the jet. Stains. Blood. Oh, my God. Fringe is a new drama on Fox that is generating a lot of buzz. How would you guys describe the show, and how did you generate the idea for it? Well, we were working on Star Trek with JJ, and we decided we all wanted to do TV together. We kind of asked ourselves, what's missing in television right now for us as viewers, and what inspired us in TV and in film? We all had different answers to that question, and I think the more we kind of sat in a room and started answering it, the, the more Fringe came into focus for us. We loved the kind of science fiction-y, science thingy that Cronenberg did in The Fly or Dead Ringers. Kind of thriller science yeah. or horror science. Just pushing the boundaries of what feels credible, but giving it such credibility that you buy it. Um, you know, even to some degree.